When one generally thinks about crossovers in midsize SUVs, they don't really think about Porsche because when you think about Porsche, you think about 9,000 RPM red lines and crazy Nürburgring lap monsters. Not this. This is no 911 GT3, nor is it a 959 or Carrera GT, no. This is a 2018 Porsche Macan and it is a crossover. You heard me right, a crossover. I suppose it's not too much of a surprise considering that the Cayenne, Porsche's larger SUV, has been on sale since 2003. It was only a matter of time before a smaller, more compact version would arrive. Considering how many Americans want crossover vehicles, the Macan made its debut in 2013 at the Los Angeles Motor Show and went on sale in Europe in spring 2014 and later the same year here in the United States. Now, I'm not a huge fan of crossovers or big SUVs, but even I have to admit, I like the design of the Macan. You can clearly see its 911 derived feminine curves, and it makes it more interesting to look at than literally any other crossover in existence. It is quite stylish, well, for a crossover at least. The 2018 Macan was available with two engine choices, a 2.0-liter turbocharged 4-cylinder borrowed from a Volkswagen Golf GTI or a 3.6-liter twin-turbo V6. The base model, like the one shown here, had the 4-cylinder making 252 horsepower and 273 pound-feet of torque, while the S, GTS, and Turbo models had the twin-turbo V6. So we finally do climb inside the Porsche Macan, the first thing you realize is it's actually quite classy in here. All black leather everywhere, specifically on this one. Now they do have other colors available. It's just, it's just clean, it's pristine. As a matter of fact, it looks like it was ripped right out of the Porsche 911 because it probably was. Another thing that this vehicle does have is it does have, in fact, a heated steering wheel. So on a cold day, you get in, you have your frozen hands. You don't have to worry about any of that. Porsche's got all the dads all over the place who are ready to buy this car. They've even got all your passengers that you're gonna be carrying around in this car because all of the seats in this car are actually heated. You also have this really nice touch screen. Here it controls all of your media, your Bluetooth audios, your calls, stuff like that. But what really impresses me it actually works. It's literally like an Android or an Apple iPhone. It's so responsive, it's instantaneous, and it's silky smooth, and it's high resolution. It doesn't look like some stuck on aftermarket tablet that you would just stick in the middle of an older car's dashboard. It's very well done. Props to Porsche on that one. It's also got lane assist and blind spot monitoring so it's like a pretty good package so you come around to the back you want to go play some golf but you look around and you notice there's no button or trunk lid anywhere so how do you open the trunk well actually there is a hidden button right here underneath the rear windshield wiper you just tap it like so and it opens for you So you might be thinking that's all well and good, but you don't want to break the bank. You might be thinking, oh, it's a Porsche. You know, it's going to have some six-figure price tag on it. Well, uh, I have the sheet here, and I can actually confirm that indeed it doesn't have a six-figure price tag. As a matter of fact, right here, it says $51,000. So you can spend around $50,000, get yourself a nice Porsche, however it's a crossover, not the low slung driver focused sports cars that Porsche is known for. So how about we get to the driving portion and let's see if the Macan is up to the task. Sport button, I'm going to push traction control off. <laughs> Not the fastest vehicle in the world, but it does have a good character with that snarky option. It's like, I told you I'm a serious performance car. I do have the seats bolstered in the lowest setting, so I am sitting relatively low in this car. It is very comfortable. Not bad, not bad. I do expect a bit more power, you know, with that Porsche badge, but uh, it'll go, it'll go. It's not 
not the fastest vehicle in the world, but you can have some fun in it. Now this is the base level Porsche Macan. It is powered by a two liter inline four turbocharged engine. That makes around 250 horsepower and around 273 pound feet of torque. And believe it or not, this engine was ripped straight out of the Volkswagen Golf GTI. I suppose that's a bit of a theme with this vehicle. It's borrowing a lot of parts. The platform is actually pulled from the Audi Q5. It's been whitened and lengthened to give the car better handling. <laughs> Steering in this vehicle is strange. It is electric. It's very pinpoint accurate. Like I can just turn the steering wheel like a millimeter and the vehicle already knows to go. That's the Porsche DNA kicking in. But you can't really feel what's happening underneath of the wheels. I've got this really cool gauge cluster here on the right. Uh, there's a knob on the steering wheel right in front of the upshift panel. And I can just switch it around. It'll show me things like my music, uh, my phone if it's connected. You can go through and it'll show you like trip information, uh, your drive time, your distance, your current fuel consumption. Um, I've got my tire pressure in here. Now this is a really cool one. It actually shows me the split of the torque as you know, this is an all-wheel drive vehicle. And the vehicle will show that actually in real time as you're driving around or if you switch it into off-road mode. Which, yes, for some reason the Porsche Macan has an off-road mode. Yeah, you see, there's nothing wrong with this specific engine, the 2-liter turbocharged four-cylinder is very good in a Golf GTI, however, in the Macan, it does feel a bit underpowered, and I don't think it's quite up to the task. If you were going to buy this car, I would want to go with one of the twin-turbo V6 options. And that's the thing with the base Macan. It handles well, but the engine doesn't do anything to properly justify its handling capabilities. It doesn't feel that exciting when you put your foot down, and I want that excitement from a Porsche. I feel that the Turbo V6 options will do better to complement this vehicle's handling prowess, but I won't know until I'm able to drive one. It's a shame that it drives so well when pushed though, because the majority of the people who buy this are going to use it only to commute to work, Kroger, and the local country club for a round of golf. I'll say this, the base Macan is much more exciting than any other crossover in its segment. It's probably quicker as well and it definitely looks better and the build quality is excellent and it is a capable daily driver. As a crossover, it beats out everything else. As a Porsche though, well, it leaves a lot to be desired. It handles well, but the full extent of that handling can't be experienced with the four-cylinder engine. It simply is too weak for a 3,900-pound vehicle. I'm sure, though, that Porsche has that remedied with the S, GTS, and Turbo models. I'll have to see when I can get my hands on one.